welcome and good um, afternoon, everyone. So I would like to begin this seminar by acknowledging the uh, traditional custodians of the land on which our four, our four Australian campuses stand and pay our respect to the elders, past, present, and emerging. On behalf of the Leadership and Organizational Effectiveness Research Network of the Center for Global Business at Monash Business School, I would like to welcome all of you to attend this webinar on unlocking the leadership trap of having favorites. The webinar is part of our 2020 seminar series, New Ways of Seeing and Pushing the Boundaries of Leadership and Organizational Research. Our speaker today is Dae Jong Choi, who is a senior lecturer in the Department of Management and Marketing at the University of Melbourne. His research focuses on examining the development of leadership and social capital, including interpersonal relationships. I share the sense of identity, reciprocity in the workplace, team dynamics, and organizational effectiveness. His research has been published in the top tier management journals, including the Journal of Applied Psychology, Journal of Organizational Behavior, the Leadership Quarterly, and Human Resource Management Review. Now, please join me to welcome Dae Jong, and he will be speaking for about 45 minutes and followed by some Q&A section. Welcome Dae Jong, and welcome everyone again. Thank you, Haman, for a great introduction. Uh, thank you everyone for attending my talk today. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, leadership phenomenon in the groups. Especially, I'm focusing on having favorite members from leaders' perspective, and then to understand the phenomenon of uh, leader member exchange relationship, which is the relationship development between team leader and team members, and how leadership uh, 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 qualities with uh, different qualities of relationship can affect uh, individual members and team. Um, performance. So before I start my presentation, my focus, my perspective to leadership is relationship driven. So one of the quote from Benny is, is that this is tripod phenomenon uh, to understand leadership from leader's perspective, followers' perspective, and the common goal. To meet the common goal, relationship is central piece that I believe to, to understand their interaction dynamics and goal achievement. Because relationship can be uh, play as a filter to perceive, interpret, and attribute leaders and members contribution to the group outcome. So having said that, uh, my key leadership theory is leader member exchange. So in this presentation, if I call LMX, that means leader member exchange, that refers to the quality of the exchange relationship between leader and member. Usually it is defined by mutual trust, respect, loyalty, and willingness to exert effort to help each other. So this is the key concept, and then I'm going to talk about uh, having favorite team members from leaders' perspective from LMX theory. Why my research question having favorite is critical issue or critical problem to be tackled. As we all know, teams has been uh, popular in many companies and organizations. And in teams, the basic uh, uh, phenomenon or basic goal is that we need to transform individual contribution to the team outcomes. And then there should be synergetic effect by uh, combining individual contribution. At the same time, team leaders do not have unlimited resource time. They have limited resource time. So for team leaders, they have to uh, effectively manage their resources time 
So they are required to differentiate the multi members. They cannot provide unlimited resource time to everyone. But the issue here is the followers may not react to those differentiation, even if it is based upon contribution, they will raise concerns about fairness issues. So there is two conflict tension between leader perspective and member perspective. And this problem has become much more serious because there is the, the increased degree of competition among teams and organization. And then uh, making uh, credible and reliable differentiation among team members based upon their individual contribution to the team outcome has become really critical issues to be used of stress. So I would say that's uh, the well uh, observed uh, because cases, but in research field, it's it's a long time uh, since it was discussed in the literature, but there is not much studies uh, so far. So I will talk about this issue by uh, uh, defining LMX differentiation. So the key issue here is that whether or not leaders should differentiate multi members, and how we understand that phenomenon. To understand uh, leader differentiation, I'm gonna use LMX theory, which means the quality of relationship between the leader and members. LMX differentiation means that the extent to which the leader and member develop different qualities of relationship with each other. So some groups tend to have better relationship with the leader than other groups. That's how LMX differentiation is defined. In more technically, uh, it is measured, it is uh, operationalized as standard deviation of LMX core. So if you measure quality of relationship as LMX in, uh, to each people, each person, then we aggregate into the team and then we calculate the deviation of it. So that we can capture the average distance among uh, LMX qualities in the team. So let me uh, explain this uh, construct by showing a very simplified diagram here. So as you can see, there are three uh, configuration of LMX differentiation. Uh, each blue dot means uh, uh, people. So let's say uh, there are three teams and then each team has four people within. If you look at the left side, there is the LMX quality score is the same. So they are having the same quality of relationship with the leader. And then they feel like they are one group because we are on the same page when it comes to the relationship with the leader. If you look at the middle, that's a medium degree of differentiation. In this case, everybody has idiosyncratic and different quality of relationship. So this situation is everybody is different when it comes to uh, LMX. The right side is high, very extremely high situation uh, when it comes to LMX differentiation. Two people uh, have a low quality relationship and the other two people have very high relationship. It shows clear segregation or separation between two people and then it's highly likely to have subgrouping within one group. And you may notice that I use indirect approach here because uh, actually we do not measure uh, the degree or extent which leader makes differentiation. We examine this by looking at the configuration of LMX qualities within team. So we do not directly measure differentiation, but we examine differentiation issue by examining the configuration of LMX qualities in team indirectly. So 
with that in mind, uh, when I looked at the literature on this issue in the leadership, uh, to uh, conclude, there is no uh, clear conclusion about the question, should leaders differentiate or not among team members? And it is very inconsistent. And then actually theory has not uh, been developed yet. The, con the close conclusion so far is the effectiveness or ineffectiveness of leader differentiation may depend on many factors. So it may de depend on many boundary conditions such as justice climate, how, how team members believe there is justice or team or task interdependence, how interdependent they are when it comes to their task configuration. But also the, the nature of relationship is so complex. Many, many scholars have suggested it's a linear relationship, whether positive or negative, or some recent scholars examine the curvy linear. So it's not purely linear or uh, 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 negative or positive, but it is, it is curvilinear. So up to a certain point, it is positive or negative, and the other point, it can be the other way around. And also, uh, it may have direct impact on performance, or it may have just indirect impact on performance. So basically, it's kind of messy, but I can tell that this question has been around in the management literature more than 70 years now, but research evidence, relatively speaking, very poor when it comes to this question. So this was my uh, question. Then, okay, there are research, there is evidence showing some to some degree about the answer to this question, but they mostly focus on just team. They uh, overlooked the impact of LMX differentiation on people or individual employees in the team. So today's topic is uh, taking the literature one step further by talking about the impact of LMX differentiation on individual performance and well-being. I have two uh, papers uh, to present and then the first paper is just published in uh, JOB. Uh, and then let me start this uh, paper first. So with that uh, uh, in mind, uh, I was thinking about, okay, uh, element differentiation or leader differentiation is important and critical topic in the management or team management and leadership literatures, but most research has examined this phenomena by having indirect measure, which is looking at LMS configuration or standard deviation with a team. And then what about the perception? Are they really perceived there is differentiation in terms of LMS, LMS qualities? So in this paper, we took uh, uh, a novel approach to understand perceptions of LMX differentiation. We developed this construct called the PLMXD or perceptions of LMX differentiation. It can be defined and measured at individual and the team level. So we are proposing this construct as key construct to understand the impact of LMS differentiation on individual because that's based upon individual perception. And we are we tested a multi-level mediated model to explain the relationship between LMS differentiation and performance. Why perception is key to understanding the impact of LMS differentiation on individual performance? As you know that uh, individual perception, what you see and then what you believe, what you interpret about the world, 
That's the key mechanism to explain your behavior in your regression rather than object reality. So the, the old uh, assumption or old uh, proposition in psychology is that subject reality is much more important than object reality. So we're gonna touch the perceptions of elements differentiation as direct way to, to understand this phenomenon. And if you look at the relationship development in general, so think about your relationship with your supervisor. When you develop or interact with each other, it's based upon your interpretation. And then there should be misunderstanding, there's a gap in perception. So uh, your leader may do something for your favor, but you don't perceive that way. You attribute your leader's treatment to, to different reasons. So it is based upon perceptual and attribution process. So the elements differentiation phenomenon should be examined in line of perception. And also perception can create the need for team members to lead this or to explain. So when I perceive there is differentiation, that can be important psychological stimulus to you and then I want to try to make sense of it. Why leader differentiate? How leader differentiate? Will this differentiation make any changes in my outcome? That's psychological reaction. So we propose this PLMXV as a key mechanism to understand the impact of LMS differentiation on individual outcomes. Furthermore, the interesting phenomenon is that we also suggest that perception of LMX differentiation is not only individual perception, but also it is collective perception. So team members can share this perception of LMX differentiation among team members so that they can create collective understanding of leader differentiation through the communication, through the interaction, through the uh, group mind, through the uh, observation of leader behavior. So we are examining this PLMXD as a multi-level uh, construct, which can explain both individual and uh, group uh, processes. And we, developed these six items. Basically, we use these six items to measure perceptions of elements differentiation. Some group members have better relationship with my manager than other people. And remember, at the beginning of this presentation, I, I introduced the construct of LMX as loyalty, trustworthiness, liking, respect. So we use this uh, term, this word here, for example, my manager is more loyal to some group members than others. So these six items were used to measure perceptions by LMX differentiation. And there is some key findings. Before we test our uh, multi-level model, we just explore data. And interestingly, this perception of LMS differentiation seem to play in dysfunctional role or negative role to individual effectiveness. It is increased turnover intention. Uh, and also if you have negative effectivity, which means that you tend to perceive things negatively, then you may perceive leader uh, differentiation much more frequently or much more extensively. The other finding which we think is very in, in, interesting is this PLMXD is negatively related to LMX, which means that if I am uh, high on LMX, if I have good relationship with my supervisor, then I am less likely to perceive differentiation. Uh, that's a well-known phenomenon from social psychology uh, by vigilance hypothesis. So if you uh, hold the high status position in society, then you are more, uh, uh, you are less likely to see uh, social injustice or discrimination. 
So that seems to happening uh, in Europe too. So once you develop high quality of a relationship with the leader, then you are less likely to perceive any differentiation or discrimination. Also, uh, if you perceive the differentiation, then you are less likely to say leader is functional, such as empowering leadership becomes low, attendance to the world becomes low, uh, supervisor justice is low, and then your job satisfaction becomes low. So in one sample, we, we test that it has some negative function uh, uh, of this construct. Above beyond that, uh, this is academic model to test uh, what it did. Basically, this uh, figure uh, tells us is that uh, there is a perception of LMX differentiation explain performance at the individual level, at the team level, and then why perceptions of uh, LMX differentiation influence performance. It is because one, it damages justice perception at the individual level, or it damages just climate at the team level. And also it increases perceptions of conflict with the team uh, or actual conflict uh, among the team members. So we propose conflict and justice as two important mechanisms to explain this result. And then what I found is that at the individual level, uh, relationship conflict is the one explained, but at the team level, justice and conflict both explain the negative influence uh, of differentiation on, on performance. So in this study, briefly summarized, uh, we found that individual perception of LMX differentiation is negatively related to individual performance. Collective perception of LMX differentiation is negatively related to team performance. And at the individual level, once I believe that leader differentiate, then I tend to perceive that our relationship is not good. Among the team members, there is conflict. That uh, intervenes in my uh, time and cognitive resource because of those uh, uh, conflicts, I don't have enough time and energy because I have to deal with those uh, shit. So it intervenes in my, my cognitive resource to perform better. So that's how we explain at the individual level. At the team level, if team members share the perception that our leader differentiates or our leader has a diff, uh, uh, good relationship with some people, but uh, bad relationship with other people, then it hurts uh, just this climate it increases conflict and then thereby undermining team performance. So it was the initiative to understand individual perception, individuals, uh, um, individuals reaction to differentiation and then let's measure or examine LMX differentiation more direct way. And then after this study we think about, okay, uh, many studies have been uh, uh, on performance side, but what about other things? Because performance is obviously one good indicator uh, for team functioning, but the other side, we need to think about other aspects of life. One is the well-being. So let's move to well-being and then or stress because it is a very stressful situation when you have to perform but leader differentiate, you need to show your contribution so that you can get support from leaders and team members. So this situation can be very stressful to employees. And then let's take a look at it. So to examine well-being, uh, we need to think about some theories to, to predict and then as I showed you at the beginning, 
Um, LMX differentiation can be from low level, medium, and high. In the low level, there is only one group. So if LMX differentiation is very low, then everybody is on the same page when it comes to the LMX quality. So we are on the same. We are not different when it comes to LMX. So they can share team identity. On the other hand, in the middle, everybody is different. So their identity, their identification can be at the person level, level and group because everybody is different. At the highest level is clear segregation between two subgroups. So they can set a team uh, group identity, but not the team, which means that they can identify themselves as a member of a subgroup, which is my enemy or my anniversary. Uh, adversary is the other side. The other groups have very high relationship. So they can define themselves, us and them, even within a group. So this kind of segregation or individualization or personalization can build some social context whereby people uh, have to react in a certain way. Why? Uh, this is very important because in one group, uh, everybody has the same uh, elements quality. They can share their membership with everyone. So they can get social support from leaders and team members because they share the membership. In the medium, it is unfortunately, everybody is different. Everybody is competing with each other because they focus on uh, personalized identity. And then, Plus, leader has different uh, quality of relationship with everyone. So it's the situation where they have to compete with each other to gain more, to gain more support, promotion, chance of career development. So it is a very stressful situation when it comes to well-being because the pressure to perform and lack of social support uh, from leaders and also from team members. But in high situation, it is not ideal because clear segregation into two groups, but at least you can get some social support from your in-group members. Let's say there are four people and then this guy and I, we both have very bad relationship with the, the leader. So, we don't get support from leader, but at least I can talk badly about my leaders with my friend, with my subgroup. So this this uh, interaction within subgroup at least increase their social uh, psychological well being when you compare their situation to medium style. So when it comes to the group outcome from group perspective, the high differentiation is not ideal situation, but in terms of psychological well-being, at least they are friend within several group. So we predicted U-shaped relationship. So well-being starts from very high, it goes down, down, down as LMX differentiation uh, increase to medium level, which is everybody is different. And then it goes up because uh, when some grouping starts to form, they can have a friend uh, within some grouping. So uh, let's test this uh, uh, covalent relationship. And the other one is, as I said, that this the situation is very stressful and then it drains your psychological resources, which was topic of COR, conservation of resource theory. So as I just explained, social support from the leader and, and team members are important psychological resources. But when there is a level of differentiation, at the medium level or high level, it can create a social context 
where I'm going to lose the support from both of either from supervisors or peers. Actually, it is potential, but actually I can actually lose. And then if I try to regain or if I try to hold that support, it may not be successful because anyway, it is differentiated situation. So based upon social identity and COL theory, we expect that, yes, in terms of psycho psychological well-being, the impact of differentiation can be U-shaped and then the lowest well-being can be found in the middle of the continuum, which is everybody is different. We tested this idea uh, with uh, a study, survey study collected from South Korea uh, uh, about um, 50 18s, and then this is what I actually found. So supporting our prediction, the psychological well-being is just a middle of LMS differentiation. And then you can see that from medium point to the highest point, psychological well-being tend to go up again. So yes, we find this is exciting. And then let's think about then it is impact on individual well-being, then someone, some individuals may uh, may uh, react to that uh, situation more seriously than other people. So what are the boundary conditions from individual perspective? So that's why we also started to look at some individual personality. Some people may react to the situation more seriously, more negatively than other people. And then what kind of personality or individual characteristics can capture those phenomenon? One we think is conscientiousness. Uh, conscientiousness um, is the characteristic people who are hardworking, dependable, uh, organized, Conscientiousness is known to have a positive relationship with performance. If you are conscientious, then you are likely to perform better than other people. Again, uh, I like to emphasize that the situation with the team, if there is high levels of LMS differentiation is stressful, not only because it creates unfairness, it creates relationship conflict, but also to me, I'm going to lose my social resources, social support from the leaders and peers. So it'll undermine performance. Then it is interesting to see that conscientiousness is, is related to performance, but it also related to self-regulation because they are hardworking, they are striving to, to attain the goal, they're dependable. So they are very good at regulating themselves to get motivated to achieve the goal. But thing is in the literature, their focus is on performance. They are uh, easily ignoring their well-being aspect. So everybody, the assumption here is that everybody has limited uh, span of resources then conscientious people tend to use most their resources to regulate this stressful situation in order to increase performance rather than improve their well-being. So they are ready to sacrifice their well-being level if they can increase their performance level. So ironically, we expected that resource depletion or this curvilinear impact can be observed and in highly conscious people. So LMX differentiation can drain resources when it comes to well-being, not performance, uh, high conscientious people. So they may seem to perform well, but when it comes to well-being, maybe it's not. 
So that's one uh, prediction we make. The other one is a more obvious one, negative affectivity. So it is basically a, a stressful situation. Then if you are people or if you are a person who tend to perceive things more negative than other people, uh, if it is neutral, then you tend to see uh, negative aspect rather than positive aspect. And then in general, you tend to experience negative emotions in in daily lives. So it is more obvious that high negative negative affectivity make you more susceptible, more sensitive to uh, discover linear relationships. What he found? Yes. Uh, so here there are two covid linear graphs, but uh, dotted line is low conscientious. You see that if you are low on conscientious, then your general level of mental health is low, but there is no fluctuation uh, depending on LMX differentiation. So LMX differentiation doesn't hurt you that much uh, uh, in, when it comes to your well-being or mental health here. But if you look at the, the uh, solid line, solid curve here, that's for uh, high conscientious people. In general, their level of well-being is higher than low conscientious people, but they are clearly curvilinear. So their mental health can be drained in the middle not the case in, for the for the low conscious people. So as consi uh, consistently, uh, we found a pattern that conscientious people uh, are more susceptible to LMX differentiation. And also for the negative affectivity, you see that if you are low on negative affectivity, then your well-being is just high and then there is no covalent relationship. You are just stated high regardless of LMX differentiation. But here, if you are uh, high, on, high, high on negative affectivity, which means that you tend to experience ne negative emotion, then your well-being drains in the middle. And then by having some social support here, your well-being level uh, can be going up uh, in the medium and, and higher level. So what we learned here, we learned that, okay, when it comes to individual well-being, it is not just linear direct relationship. It can be U-shaped relationship when it comes to uh, well-being. And we developed this study based upon social identity theory and conservation of resource theory as a theoretical framework. And the third one is interesting and is conscientiousness double edged sword. Uh, it's not a new finding here, but there are a small number of studies report that conscientious people are very good at self-regulation. They are achieving goal, they perform better, they are reliable, dependable. But when it comes to well-being, maybe they are, they are very easily sacrifice their well-being level. Here, their well-being is very influenced by uh, alarm differential level within team. And uh, finally, we looked at both performance in study uh, one paper and in this in, in progress paper, we looked at non-performance criteria. So it may be difference between performance and non-performance, especially well-being. Uh, because it is very important to know that in the literature, there is evidence that uh, the relationship between uh, LMX differentiation and team performance is actually inverted the U shape. So this is gonna be our fi final thought uh, to you. Uh, so here is the, the two graphs. The 
left side that's find, found by other studies at the team level. When it comes to prediction of team performance, LMX differ differentiation found to be good and the best in the middle, where everybody is different and then everybody is competing for, uh, for gaining resources. From our study, what we found is that well-being is the lowest in the middle. So uh, based upon this two graph, what you can tell at the team level, it looks like the team members perform better in the middle of differentiation because that's social pressure. But if you look at the well-being level, maybe that's the most draining situation, especially if you are really motivated to attain goal, like conscientious people, their well-being is very highly susceptible to LMX differentiation. So we don't know yet, but we just found the, the initial evidence showing the relationship between LMX differentiation and psychological well-being. So hopefully this gives something uh, for future research or some insights to develop uh, uh, actual interventions or leadership presentations. So, well, uh, this is all I have uh, for now. And then uh, I'm happy to take any questions or discussion uh, we may have. Thank you. Thank you, Dejong. Thank you for sharing with us about your recent research. Um, that is very interesting and give us some provocative ideas about when we look at uh, how leader, you know, form different qualities of relationship with team members. So what would be the implications and whether the implications for their performance, for their well-being, for other aspects, you know, of their, of, of their work attitudes and behavior. Now, I've got two questions here uh, from the audience. The first one is that if employees are allowed it to have a subjective reality about LMX differentiation, would it cause confusion or any potential ill feelings or deep suspicions about, you know, colleagues? Um, should it be the responsibility for organizations to make sure that leaders should explain the reason behind the differentiation um, so that, you know, everyone is clear and they can concentrate to deliver what they're supposed to do in the interest of the company. So what would be your response to these two questions? Yeah, uh, this, is, this, is the, this is not only a problem for the differentiation, but most HR and leadership, the, one of the critical problems is people perceptions are different. So, whatever behavior or treatment or actions leader takes, individual may perceive them different, differently. So one solution to that is that building strong culture. So strong culture means that everybody shares the same thing. So here, uh, the problem arises when people's perceptions are different and then they are very controversial. But if leader and organization or HR system can create strong system or strong culture where everybody proceed in the same way. So for example, uh, many HR system make it clear that what's your goal, what's your culture, what's your social norms. By setting and establishing those cultures and norms are clear and strong, uh, team members can perceive things or share things on common ground. So that's the important step. And then that's why I believe that uh, culture and climbing is the, one of the most effective management tool. Yeah, I, I can imagine that, right? Because, you know, you know, all the members, they don't join the team or company at the same time. So some of them, they join the company earlier than later. They know, you know, the norms, all these expectations more than the new employees. Mm -hmm. So just by, based on your research funding, it seems to be that to some extent, the differentiation, the different qualities, you know, good, because they may be able to, 
to stimulate, you know, some sort of, um, you know, a bit of discussion, new ideas or doing things together. But on the other hand, to some extent that will undermine, you know, the well-being of people working together. So how, how we can draw the balance between achieving the good performance by having some extent of the differentiation. But on the other hand, how we should manage that extent of the differentiation that will be damaged, you know, or affect the well-being of the members of the team. How we can strike that balance? Uh, yeah, that, that's a good question. And uh, the one balance, uh, the first of all, it's very hard to find the exact optimal level of differentiation. It depends on many situations. But one thing, why LMX differentiation or differentiation has negative impact on people's well-being because it creates uncertainty that my well-being or my future outcome will be reduced or redundant to other people. So they feel differentiation is a psychological threat to themselves. To reduce that threat, one way is that leader should be prototypical, which means that they will believe that leader has benign or group-oriented uh, intention. So let's say that leader try, try to differentiate. Why leader differentiate? Because that's for us as a group. They are uh, uh, leader. My leader tried to their, his best or her best to achieve our goal. That will be good for our team. Mm. If once they have their strong belief together, then they believe that, okay, differentiation, that's not hurting myself. That's for group uh, focus, so I can I can believe, I can trust in my leaders. Maybe that's one, uh, one uh, thing to go. So many leader studies uh, has focused on only behavior, what to do, how to do. They forgot about how to build a shared identity, one of them. So the catch word may be making leader as one of the team members in terms of identity. But many situation team members believe the leader is not one of us. So that what he or she does may be threat to us. Then the, the situation will be a lot different. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you touched on this point a little bit. I, I've got another question here. So think about your findings. What should we be teaching managers about building relationships? in their teams. So what would be some practical insight tips that you would advise to the managers? Yeah, so when when we started looking at individual outcome is that, okay, the whole idea of differentiation is to increase group outcome. So it's all focus of group outcome. Maybe that's good for a group, but we need to also take care about individual well-being, individual attitude. So the by nature, the group working is needs sacrifice from certain number of people, and then we need to take care of them. So one message uh, I can give to leaders is that you should differentiate, be aware that some people are making sacrifice to the group members, and then you need to take care of them. So many cases when I deliver leaders training, they believe that leadership is something automatically done or something that's uh, time consuming, but it is actually very time consuming. The other one is that without full understanding of each team members, it's very hard to do. It's not just one shot. It's not just clear shot. It is a very complex dynamic relationship. So, be aware that some people, if you are conscientious, then you need to aware them uh, having more input to outcome, but also their cycle of well-being can be drained at the same time. So leaders shouldn't make extra effort to build a relationship or to share common ground to touch individual based uh, well-being issue or their idiosyncratic circumstances. Actually, this idea was not new. This idea also touched by transformational leader theory. Uh, they talked about individual consideration. 
So leaders have to say the group uh, ideal ideal influences or inspiration motivation, but also leader have to provide individual consideration. But in many cases, leaders' performance is closely tied to group outcome, not individual caring. So leader's job is basically caring about group outcomes. I don't care about individual well-being because that's not my KPI. Mm -hmm. So for HR, maybe there is a way to take individual outcomes or individual well-being into KPI for leaders or at least mentoring uh, relationship or any other informal leaders training. Yeah, I think I think you make a very good point, especially when most of the time when a leader, you know, leading a team, the team KPI always more important, you know, outweigh the, than the, the individual well-being of the team, right? Because eventually they're only measured by the team KPI instead of the individual well-being as the way to reflect, you know, the leader quality in, in that team. It's a very good point. Now I've got another question here. They asked uh, a little bit technical, which is yeah. how do you measure the well-being um, against the LMX differentiation in your results slide? How did you measure well-being? Uh, well-being uh, was measured by one of the popular scale, which is called general mental health. So that scale has 12 item, uh, 10 items. Uh, that item has been used a lot in many studies to measure psychological well-being. Uh, LMXD, in the, the second slide, we measure the LMXD as indirect, which is your standard deviation within team. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I got another question here as well. Uh, this is a question about how LMX is conceptually different to supervisor support. Uh, yes, conceptually it is different because uh, as we know by the term LMX is leader member exchange. So it assumes the exchange relationship from both party. So that's a mutual and less a less a proper relationship. But supervisor support is basically my perception of support from the supervisor. That's one way relationship. One is support from the supervisor. But in reality, I agree that there is many uh, much overlap between the two constructs. But conceptually, LMX uh, 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 assumes less reciprocal relationship where supervisor support is one in relationship. Yeah, good. All right. Now, um, I got a question here, you know, Dejo, after listening to your presentation, especially. You know, now you, you, you know that we are all under the COVID situation. And uh, most of us still continue to work from home. We can actually physically or in person uh, interacting with your supervisors and team members in, in team or whatever. So I think that because we are unable to observe or experience the relationship and how other members interact with the leader, would that differentiation effect would become less important uh, because we don't know, you know, how they interact with each other. Would that be better off uh, by for leader working in the virtual team, or mm. would that in fact become much stronger when we are actually in person? Uh, we can able we are able to observe how other members interact with the supervisor in terms of all this differentiation. So I think it'll become much more important because they can actually see and experience how other people contribute. Mm -hmm. So it is very important for leaders to make it transparent and clear when it comes to the order location or any important decision making and then provide the feedback right time. So, uh, this COVID situation makes a big transformation when it comes to LMX relationship because we are not living the world. Uh, we can see each other every day. But also we are actually uh, concerned about our own performance. That's the, the uh, situation. Uh, at the presentation I talk about the dilemma the leader face is that they don't have unlimited resource time. They have to allocate into team members. So just go back to the Beijing fair 
fundamental justice. He still followed those distributed justice, procedural fair, fairness, and uh, interaction fairness, then uh, it, will be, it, will, it will become clearer. But otherwise, people will doubt in many decisions or procedures. People just worried about because they cannot see them. So uh, there is much burden for leaders, I think. They need to spend much more time to make one-on-one -on -one connection because there is no group-wide group meeting uh, anymore. Sure. Okay. Thank you, Dejo. Now, I got one last question, you know, Dejo, uh, because you and I, we are sharing a similar research interest. Uh, one thing I, I always also in my mind saying that um, to, to some extent, differentiation, it seems to be may not be a good thing, right? We, di we differentiate among people, put them into different status, and then more likely to create a comparison among the members competing the resources, competing the psychological support, competing the status, what they have in the eyes of the supervisor. But on the other hand, you know, leaders, it seems to be very difficult. They can build the similar quality of relationships with all the members. It's kind of like a dilemma in between, not that because the leader may not want to do it, but he got so many things to manage as well, not only about managing the subordinates, also managing the relationship with the boss or other peers. So what would be other practical tips that you can offer um, to the managers about how they actually form or manage all this kind of network of relationships with their subordinates or peers? Yes, that's a very tricky question, but uh, it is often surprising to know that uh, leaders are not aware of how much time would it take to develop a relationship. So many leaders, LMX for relationship with followers is something they can automatically develop without putting any resources there. Mm -hmm. But it's not. It is serious uh, uh, investment of time and resources. The other reason for that is that if you look at the many HR uh, systems so far, for example, performance management, uh, it's now changing, but previously it's one time a year. So they just deliver, deliver important information once a year, and then that's it. But now, if HR systems provide a more frequent performance feedback for the improvement, that gives a good opportunity for leaders to engage in frequent conversation and continuous development trajectory for each member, because that's performance development situation. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one way we can we can uh, help leaders to develop a uh, uh, better relationship. So, I think it's still. Uh, there is a lack of awareness among even leaders. Their job is much focused on tasks or goal attainment. Maybe the culture now is very aggressive, but this is a whole lot of different issues. And then relationship from the slide is that it can be filtered for your perception. So whatever action you take, it may not be delivered to your members as you want. Mm. So it's a more psychological relation building, mental relationship, career development approach is needed for leaders. Or the system can make it clear and transparent so that everybody can know how decision was made and how outcomes are distributed. Uh, without those transparent system, that's a leader's burden because and that's why we call that many operational gap uh, in HR and leadership. Sure, sure. I, I got I got another uh, question. Probably will touch on some issue about uh, from the audiences as well. So, yeah. if I am an employee in that situation, so mm -hmm. what I can do to manage that differentiation or the differences of the relationship set by by manager? What 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 I can do to make it better? What I can do? To, to manage my well-being, mm. I, can, I can better in terms of forming that relationship with my boss. 
Yes, uh, as I mentioned, I think one good solution is the making performance management, like from HR perspective, having a performance development, performance management, performance evaluation session as much as possible, as frequently as possible. It gives official vision, not only for the leaders, but also for the members to know about my leaders' expectation my leader's criteria for the performance evaluation, mm. my leader's view on career development. So mm. having realistic and clear expectation from the organization, it leaves a lot of uncertainty that I might have due to differentiation. Why differentiation is stressful? Because it creates a lot of uncertainty and also a lot of competition. Once we have that opportunity, then there will be shared understanding among the team members. At least mm -hmm. if we know about the rule of the game, it will help us to cope with the well-being. Sometimes mm -hmm. for the individual perspective, go back to the psychology. So think about what you can control, what you cannot control. Mm -hmm. If you worried about something you cannot control, that's not wise coping tactics. You can focus on something you can control to improve well-being. So well-being issue is overlooked, ignored the issue a lot of time in the matter of team outcome, team objective. But maybe each time we need to take care of team well-being too. Sure. Yeah, I, I got three, three other questions here. For yes. That, please. Um, this is a quite interesting, uh, but I will probably lump them together. So with the... Uh, with the L mixed differentiation, you saw like a, a tactics or like a manipulative tools the leader use um, mm. the organically or strategically, you know, use it, use it as a way to differentiate, yep. you know, yeah. make them work harder, make them compete, then compete resources, they, they, they will come to me to be, to be the in-group members. That's why yep. to work harder. W would you think so? Yes, yeah, so that's very important tactic, a uh, strategic point of view from HR perspective, because if you take a strategic point of view at all, then differentiation is the good way to distribute and allocate company resources according to human capital. So leaders should be trained in a way of strategic management so emphasizing organization goal and then understanding culture and then clear understanding of KPI. And then they can have the, the meetings or tactics with the development. Uh, and then the other issue we need to take away is that LMX differentiation is still in direct way. So the one issue with LMX differentiation is that we did not actually capture how leaders do to make differentiation. We still look at members' perception of relationship quality. So relationship by definition can be different technical or task-based mm. differentiation. So I ask leaders color to spend more work to examine actual leader differentiation as leadership tactic or influence tactic or strategy management. So that tactic can be different, cascade down from time management to middle management to frontline management. That's another perspective to take out of uh, this LMX studies. Sure. Okay, I've got last two questions here. Uh, one question is, what do you think of the future of uh, LMX research? And the second one is, does this model work similarly for, you know, all different team size? If the team is a bigger or smaller, how this effect would going to be different in, in relation to the curvilinear relationship? What would be presented in your slides? So I'd like to uh, answer the second question first that, that's more concrete. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, I'm, I'm doing another, I'm analyzing another uh, data and then Initially, we found uh, this covalent relationship is much more apparent in large size teams. So, if as you can see, that if it is small, then there's no meaning with the subgrouping. But if teams becomes larger, this covalent relationship tend to be much more obvious. 
uh, than small size. So uh, team size is one of the good moderator, I think. When it comes to future elements research, uh, okay, there are many things. Uh, whenever, uh, to be honest, I just color, so I'm working on a couple of different areas, but LMX is the most hardest topic to present to the audience mm. because people uh, have a hard time to understand it because it's not, it, because of many reasons. One is that the measurement issue. So mm. as I said, that LMX is a mutual relationship, but the measurement itself is just perception. Mm. The second one is that uh, LMX is just just a good thing. It 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 takes all the variance of leader. So it's so so genetic argument that once you build a good relationship, then everything will be good. So that's why people uh, lose their interest because there is no uniqueness about, for example, some uh, theory around how to develop the relationship or or what's the, what's the uh, uh, boundary condition. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a declining area, but in the future, if you focus on measurement issue by using other methodology, not mm -hmm. only survey, one of the area may be social network, and mm -hmm. just maybe one thing. The other one is that uh, uh, using secondary data. Mm -hmm. So, broadening uh, in terms of methodology and also the the attribution of process some psychological mm -hmm. process when we interact between leaders and members that's another area for future and the third one is cross-cultural uh, uh area because uh lmx is one of the most popular leader theory in terms of cross-cultural research especially Asian scholars have been interested in this topic, but there is no clear theory or uh, framework to understand cross-cultural differences. The uh, mm -hmm. question becomes whether or not it is actually cross-cultural different uh, to have LMX effect. There is evidence from uh, one of the study, but it's a long way to go. So LMX should be more clearly focused on the, the practical issues, relation development and the measurement issue. So that's my uh, takeaway. Okay, I think once again, thank you so much for Dejong, um, you know, for sharing with us um, his latest research about the, the LMX differentiation. As you can see that, you know, this is the seminar series, new ways of seeing and pushing the boundaries of a leadership and organizational research. Um, today's research clearly to articulate this idea um, because most of the time we always look at the relationship about leader and follower as a curve linear. But today, you know, Dae Jung presented something very interesting and counterintuitive to what we always think about a curve linear relationship. So uh, once again, I am sure that the audience can, you know, benefit from your talk today. If we got some practical tips and the theoretical insights about whether to continue to do or develop some sort of uh, programs for leadership development or le leadership research. Once again, thank you so much, Lei Chong. Thanks for your time to sharing your thank stuff with us. Thank you. And uh, thank you everyone. Once again, I, I hope that you will continue to support our seminar series. The next one, that will be in uh, October. Thank you so much and uh, see you guys. Thank you.